Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Philip. Today we're going to be talking about jigsaws. If you're just starting off in woodworking, these are the tools that you might not even think that you will need, but I strongly recommend that you grab one of the jigsaws when you're building your tool collection. Jigsaws are very misunderstood among people who are just starting up and uh, they, they think that it's kind of a convoluted and a special tool, but really I would say this is my favorite tool for the woodworking period. If I need to make a quick cut, I just go with this and I make this. If I have to set up a table saw, I have to fold it out. I have to set it up and cut it. The same thing with the miter saw. I have to bring it up to the station, set it up to make cuts. With this thing, I just take it out, slap in the blade and I keep on going. Easy as that. So whenever you're especially starting out and you don't know which tools you need and you know that all of these different tools are very expensive and it's hard to get them, you need to prioritize what you can get on your budget. So this should be definitely on your list. So the, the natural progression, just like it was for me, it's uh, you'll, you'll start off with some kind of hacksaw, then you'll go with a hand saw, then eventually you'll get a circular saw, but then eventually you might arrive at this and I would recommend that you arrive at this earlier than later. Today I'd like to talk about two jigsaws in two completely different price spectrums. This jigsaw can be purchased on Amazon for about 33 bucks. It's like 32 and change. This tool by itself costs about 200 bucks. Depending on different sales, it can go about 180. It allows you to make cuts on a relatively thin pieces of material. The stroke of the blade determines how deep of a cut you can make. So for most projects, really, you can substitute most of your saws just with this one tool. The main difference between a circular saw and the jigsaw is in the ability to adjust the depth. Because here, I can adjust the depth of the cut. There. That allows me to go to have that much play. While in a jigsaw, just the amount of blade that comes out that limits your penetration. These are also great for making curved cuts, especially in plywood, or MDF. It is really easy to guide it along exactly how you drew the line. So today I want to discuss all of these different features and what these jigsaws do and what is different about them. What really justifies the price difference between let's say 35 and 200. And if you're trying to choose a jigsaw that you want to buy, this will give you an idea of uh, what you're kind of working with. The first thing you should do after you purchase any kind of jigsaw is purchase a set of blades. Whenever you purchase a jigsaw brand new, they will come with one general purpose blade. So as you can see, here's one that came with a Black & Decker and there's one that came with the DeWalt. And uh, both of these are fast blades, fast cut. Since they're, they might be a little bit different, I will be testing these two pieces side by side. So I will be comparing them using the same exact set of blades. These blades are really cheap. So really, as soon as you purchase the jigsaw, buy yourself a set and then you're set for years. If you didn't know, most of the blades nowadays are interchangeable and, uh, and they're mostly referred to as the T-shank blade. So if you can see over here at the top, it has a T, kind of like a cross. The old blades used to be U-shaped and uh, they're not really used very frequently nowadays. The T-shape is the standard. So, $33, $200. Let's compare the features. Before messing with the blade, make sure that your battery is taken out or the cord is 
disconnected. On the DeWalt, what you do is you pull this lever out and you insert in the blade, like so. There, now it's operational. It's almost as easy as that. What you do is you pull down on this lever and that allows for the blade to drop in and now it's locked. So same thing, really similar setup. So now we talk about the depth of a stroke and that is the amount of movement that the blades go, goes up and down. The DeWalt allows the blade to travel by 26 millimeters, which is a full inch. While the Black & Decker allows only 19 millimeters of travel. Both of these jigsaws provide really good speed control and both of them provide it on variable control, which means that the blade will move at a different speed depending on how much pressure you're applying on the trigger, except that on the DeWalt, there is a trigger, but you can also adjust the snob here at the top with the numbers. So that already creates the upper limit. And then with the trigger, you are fine tuning the movement as you need it. On the Black & Decker, there is no other control other than the trigger. For the motor types, DeWalt uses a brushless motor, which means that it generates less heat and therefore it should last a little bit longer. The Black & Decker is a Type 2 motor and it's a 5 amp motor, which is actually pretty good for uh, such a budget jigsaw, because for the higher end, with the cord, you would want around seven amps. DeWalt goes up to 3,200 SPM, while the Black & Decker goes up to just 3,000. Still, the difference is pretty negligible. Triggers. As you see over here on both of these, on the DeWalt, there's only one trigger, but the handle just feels overall easier to hold. While holding it without holding the trigger, I have full control of the device. And then I just have to apply the, the trigger and then it goes. With the Black & Decker, since it doesn't have all of these extra speed settings like the DeWalt, it has a different trigger. It actually is made for two fingers. So you have much more precise control of the speed, which is very useful and it works. But in the end, you're holding the whole jigsaw just with two fingers without putting any fingers on the triggers. I would say this is safer than this. To the next feature, on the DeWalt, there is a safety trigger right here. The safety trigger allows me to lock out the power so I cannot activate it even if the power pack is on, I wouldn't be able to press the trigger. On the Black & Decker, you don't have the safety, so make sure to always unplug the cord, but I would still say the same about your DeWalt. Whenever I'm not using it, I always unplug it. Safety is, is a great feature, but don't trust it. Sometimes you might forget to turn it on. For orbital positions, which are very important for a jigsaw, that is the amount of play that the blade has when it travels forward, when it's cutting up and down. And is it just going straight up and down or does it move a little bit more forward? So on the DeWalt, you have these settings here on the side. You have four different settings for the amount of play that the blade gets. On the Black & Decker, it is not called orbital, it is called curve control, but it's the same exact thing. You have four exact same settings. So really very, very similar. Wire guards. So it's these pieces that are protecting the area around the blade. So it is harder for you to stick your finger in there inside. 
but it's these guards. And as you can see, both of them, both of these jigsaws have them. And to tell you the truth, I like the Black & Decker one more because as you can see, it sticks out a little bit further. So it allows me to see the cut directly from the top. Now we're coming to the fun stuff, the shoe bevel. On the DeWalt, you don't have to just make a straight cut at a 90 degree angle. You can also change it up. In the back here, there are markings for 0, 15, 30, and 45 degrees. And the 45 degree allows you a positive lock. And it works in both directions. Black & Decker, it has a similar shoe, but for the bevel cuts, you are kind of limited. As you can see, it does not have the same kind of adjustments like the DeWalt, and to get that done, you would have to use a screwdriver to loosen the screw, which then allows you to position it, and then you have to tighten it again. There you go. Now you can make the 45 degree bevel cut. Even though this jigsaw is capable of bevel cuts, I wouldn't want to mess with this plate too much. As you can see, I just used it once and I already scratched up that screw. DeWalt also has an LED light, which assists you in seeing what is actually underneath, what are you cutting. The Black & Decker, of course, doesn't have an LED, but at this price point, who would really expect one? The DeWalt has another cool feature, which is a protective plastic shoe cover. What it is, it's this cover, because underneath there's the metal plate, but if you don't want to scuff up the material that you're cutting, just put on the cover. And there you go. Now start rolling this smooth plastic over anything you want. On the Black & Decker, you just have that metal plate and that's it. But it's somewhat smooth. I've never scratched anything with it, but I've never cut anything that I was afraid to scratch up either. Both of these have an integrated air blower, which blows uh, the shavings out of your way, allowing you to see a little bit better. If you're using a vacuum hose in your wood shop, the vac hose attachment would be a great option. On the DeWalt, there isn't one. But on a Black & Decker, right here. Cool, huh? For power, the DeWalt uses a battery, which doesn't come with the tool whenever you purchase it. You have to buy it separately. So the tool would usually be like this, plus a blade. For a Black & Decker, it uses regular AC power. And the working weight in hand of these tools is the warranty on a DeWalt is three years for limited warranty, and they also provide one year of servicing for free. So if something wears out in your tool within a year, you can take it to a DeWalt authorized center and they will refurbish it for you. 
The Black & Decker warranty is two years and it is limited for use only in home environment. So if you're planning to use it on a job site and then you wanna claim warranty, most likely it's gonna be denied. You don't have that issue with the Walt. So after we went over all of these different features, you can see that cheap and expensive doesn't always mean that they're completely different and they just don't belong even next to each other. But really, these are very similar types of tools. So besides the obvious benefit of the battery versus cord, this is mobile, I can walk around with it, I don't have to worry about cutting the cord or if I have a whole bunch of things laying around. I just don't wanna get snagged on the cord or something. So mobility is definitely great. So if you're choosing the DeWalt over the Black & Decker because of the shoe bevel, I completely understand you. That is the reason why I'm switching to it. Other than that, if you want a jigsaw that will work great in your woodworking projects, I would recommend a Black & Decker. It works great for most hobbyist applications and unless you are trying to carry it out to a job site where you're gonna need the warranty and protection, then choose this. If you really wanna go cordless and that is your main goal here, if you just don't wanna deal with this anymore, you still don't have to go on a full-blown jigsaw like this. Then just go and get this same exact Black & Decker, but with a battery. It costs 58 bucks, so yeah, it's about 25 bucks more than this one, but you will have the battery and the freedom. Of course, you'll still be limited by the factors that we discussed before, but overall, you will have a solid performing tool at home. Another cool part about the Black & Decker battery-powered jigsaw is that it will come with the battery and the charger. If you're going to DeWalt, as I mentioned before, you have to purchase the battery, you have to purchase the charger, everything. If you're going all in and let's say you bought this corded version and the pack of blades, all in, you're under 50 bucks. If you decided to go with a Black & Decker battery powered with blades, the whole setup under 75 bucks. If you wanna go DeWalt with battery, with the charger and the same blades, about 240 bucks. So you choose from what you've seen and let me know. Tell me your thoughts, what would you choose? But this Black & Decker is definitely a great performer. I've used it on several of my projects. And uh, now I think I'm gonna give it away to a friend of mine who doesn't have a jigsaw. And I think this will be a perfect way for him to get introduction into using one. So in the case of a DeWalt, let's say if you decide to purchase this jigsaw, what I would recommend you do you wanna do it only if you have other DeWalt tools or if you're planning to purchase more DeWalt tools. So then they can share the batteries and you can swap them back and forth between different tools. And that is the reason why I am using DeWalt is because all of my tools, I just use the same two batteries throughout all of them. Talking about batteries, batteries can be pretty expensive, especially in the DeWalt lineup. The reason why I mentioned that the Black & Decker has the, the battery included in the price whenever you buy the, the cordless version is great because these batteries, they're not cheap. Sometimes the tool is cheaper than the batteries. If you wanna buy these, they can go from about 40 to 100 bucks, easy. DeWalt is not the only high-end tool brand out there. There are plenty others that you can find. Just once you figure out which one you like, which one fits your needs the most, then you stick with it, start buying the batteries for that specific brand, and then just build your collection from there. Let's talk about pricing. For these tools, a lot of them are pretty expensive, but you don't really have to pay the, the retail price. For example, today, this DeWalt retails at Lowe's for about 200 bucks. On Amazon, you can find it for about 180. But if you go on eBay, you can find it for under 150 and it's gonna be sold by an authorized reseller, so why not use that route? If you don't mind pre-owned equipment, you could go the eBay route and actually purchase used tools, even though most people who buy these don't really sell them unless they just ran them into the ground. But you can sometimes find them even in places like local pawn shops. Times can get hard and people will turn these things in. 
The only problem with purchasing tools used or pre-owned is not knowing how they were used or abused or just how they were treated overall and are they gonna break on you the next day after you buy them. So keep that in mind because with the new ones, you get warranty. With used ones, sorry, no warranty, but sometimes you can get a really cool gem and get it for almost free. So now you know that if you want a jigsaw, you don't have to spend $200 to get some kind of cool performance. If you're willing to sacrifice some of the features and you want to get the basic tool that will operate great and will have warranty, about 50 bucks for a corded one or 75 bucks for a cordless one, including the blades, you're all set. And we have arrived at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, now you can make a decision on which jigsaw fits your style and your needs. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what are your thoughts. I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching.